everyone, this is Nancy Guzman again, Transfer Center Specialist. This video is Decoding Your Financial Aid Award Letters. Financial Aid Award Letters are financial statements that summarize the types of resources um, of potential financial aid that you will receive. Um, learning how to read them will help you evaluate how much it will actually cost to finance your education across different institutions. And so the goal of this video is to help you evaluate those award letters so that you can make an informed decision about where you might want to attend, as well as understanding the true cost of attending each of the institutions that you've applied to and been accepted. Before we move on, I do want to give a brief disclaimer that this uh, financial aid award letter uh, video is geared to those that can file the FAFSA. And so if you are not able to file the FAFSA, um, and you should be filing the RICE Act, um, some of this might not apply entirely to you. And so you should reach out to um, request specific su support on that. Um, in general, a lot of the different items that we will discuss uh, in this video, you're going to find across every single institution. And so um, I think it's, it'll be a good general overview to kind of understand what language um, colleges are speaking when it comes to financial aid and making sure that you really understand what they're saying. So let's go ahead and dive in. So um, as I've said, and as you've encountered already through the application process, there's a lot of terminology out there, a lot of jargon that can be sometimes confusing because it doesn't completely make sense why we're calling something that thing as opposed to simplifying it. And a lot of the time there isn't really a good reason. It's just kind of been the way that it it's always been. And um, we just, we're not here to change that terminology, but I do want to make sure that you understand it so that um, you feel that the institutions are speaking to you a little bit more. All right, so there's a lot of this terminology. The first one is FAFSA and all of you should be familiar with what this is. The FAFSA is a free application for federal student aid. Um, and this application is filed every single October for the upcoming academic year. So if you didn't file this past October for 2021, you need to file now. From the FAFSA, you get what's called an EFC or estimated family contribution. This estimated family contribution number is referring to what roughly your family can contribute towards your college education per year. From here, you receive financial aid or money that assists you, for, assists you with paying for colleges. The financial aid that you receive comes in various forms. You could get grants, which are free money or also often referred to as gift aid, or you could get loans which you have to pay back. So those are the two different types of aid, grants and loans. And in grants, you have um, you have it called different things, free money, gift, um, as well as scholarships. There's also additional terminology for that, for the different types of uh, financial aid that you're receiving. Um, colleges will refer to merit, um, merit aid, as the scholarships that you receive based on your grades. So when you've applied to, for admission into a college, you typically receive an initial um, scholarship. This scholarship is based entirely on your grades, so that's merit. There's also called talent, um, talent aid or program specific aid. Talent aid, this, these are things such as um, choral, band, theater scholarships, as well as maybe like mock trial. These are things that you have to audition for in front of a panel of judges essentially to receive some form of financial aid. These talent-based awards are typically small, uh, but they do add up. There's also program specific. So these program specific types of aids are scholarships. So let's say you are um, a STEM student. Maybe a college or university has that STEM scholarship. And so these are things that you should be seeking out to see if you might qualify for them. You, you want to understand and be able to apply to anything that uh, you might qualify for. And finally, need-based. 
You'll hear this word a lot because need-based goes back to your EFC. Um, the way to prove that you have a need is to file the FAFSA and to receive a low EFC from the FAFSA. And so anytime you receive need-based aid, it's based on that EFC found on the FAFSA. Got it? All right. Financial aid award letters will all look relatively different school to school, but there's a, really a basic formula to that. And it's really just the point of, of analyzing these financial aid award letters is that you want to know what a college is really offering you. Um, and so these award letters will list um, everything that they are offering you so that you can compute that. And like I said, they have a, a basic basic formula to follow. So um, don't be afraid to write on these award letters and highlight as well as, you know, make notes for yourself or questions to follow up with that university directly. All right, so that formula is direct cost. Direct cost refers to tuition, room and board, and any other fees like technology fees or student activity fees that are added to your account. This is the sticker price, if you will. So it's direct cost minus gift aid. So again, gift, gift aid refers to those scholarships and things like that. Minus also loans. Loans um, are something that you're offered through the FAFSA if uh, everyone's offered loans. But it's really up to you if you want to, um, to take them out. The loans, um, are sometimes factored into this equation most of the time. So it gets a little tricky as to really understand how much you need to pay at the end of it all, but we'll get there. So direct cost minus gift aid minus loans equals your out-of-pocket cost. This is the out-of-pocket cost, the actual amount of dollars not covered by any form of financial aid that you have to come up with per year and per semester. Your word letters will break that up between fall and spring, or if they're in a trimester or quarter system, by each of those uh, terms. So back to gift aid. Gift aid, um, some things that you'll see on an award letter will be those merit scholarships, such as an honor scholarship, a presidential scholarship, a trustee scholarship, all of those things. Um, your Pell Grant, which comes directly from the FAFSA. This is based on your family's EFC. The MAP grant, which comes from the state of Illinois, and again, based on your EFC. So these are need-based grants. Um, and other grants and scholarships provided directly by the college or university. So if you've applied and been accepted to private colleges and universities, they'll have a lot more wiggle room under the grants and scholarships part than, let's say, a state school. So those are the types of gift aid that you're gonna see. Loans get a little bit tricky. There's a lot of things to consider, so I'll break those down separately. And some of the questions that you might have are, can I afford to take out the, the, the amount of dollars that you're being offered? Is that a realistic thing you can take on? And which loans are better for you? And how do you know? All right. So again, these financial aid award letters could look a little messy, and we'll take a look at one so that you can see a quick example of it. But essentially what you're trying to determine is what is that out-of-pocket cost? That after, the, after your, your free money and by taking out the loans, how much money can, do you need to come up with? And this is a gap that you'll need to directly pay to the institution to continue being eligible to register. So this is a real cost to take on um, the term, and to determine how you'll pay for it through maybe a part-time job, um, additional loans, um, or any, any combination of either. All right, so loans. There are different types of loans. There are those loans that come directly from the federal government and those that come from other sources. So loans in your name offered to you based on the FAFSA are the direct subsidized and the direct unsubsidized loans. Most of the time you will be offered both, but sometimes you're only offered unsubsidized. This all goes back to your EFC and, and 
theoretically how much money your family can contribute to school. Okay, so the direct subsidized loans, these are directly from the federal government provided when you file the FAFSA. There's no interest on this loan while you're in school, but interest does accrue after. And there's typically a grace period of about six months before you, this loan kicks in, um, before you have to start giving those payments. The direct unsubsidized loan is again from the federal government, it is in your name. Um, this loan accrues interest all the time. And it also has a grace period of about six months before you have to start giving your payments. Now, if you have an extreme need that is not met by um, additional scholarships, then you might be in a position to need to take out a private loan. I am not a financial advisor, so before you determine whether a private loan is right for you, you should be speaking with a financial aid, um, advisor at the institution that you're considering. Private loans come from a bank, and they will be taken out on your name or with a cosigner, and they are based on your credit. So if you have no credit or bad credit, this is not a good option. Um, and then there's also Parent PLUS loan. Parent PLUS loans, sorry about that, Parent PLUS loans are from the federal government. But instead of being provided to you, they come under the name of your parents. And so this is a loan that your parents are taking out on your behalf to help you pay for school. And it is based on their credit, so there's no guarantee that they will be um, approved. And um, again, it's just, it's on their name, so something to be mindful of. Whether you need to take out loans, any loan, or all types of loans, the ones that tend to have the lowest interest rates are the, those first two, the direct subsidized and the direct unsubsidized loans, because they come directly from the federal government. So let's take a look at a sample financial aid award letter. Okay, so remember that basic formula of a direct cost minus gift aid minus loans equals out-of-pocket cost. Let's break this down. So your direct cost here, which includes tuition and room and board. So theoretically, if you were to go to this university, live on campus for a year, you'd pay 45,940. You received a scholarship of about 21,500 each year. That's amazing. That brings you your, your cost significantly. And then you filed a FAFSA on time, you followed all those steps, and you are receiving some need-based awards. So you're receiving the, the MAP grant from the state of Illinois. You're receiving the Pell grant. So these two are from the federal government. And then um, the school that um, is allowing us to use this award letter is Olivet. And so um, then the institution is giving the student also $5,000 additionally. And this is again, private schools will do that because they see that you have a need and they have money to fill that need. So they'll give you what they can. But there is typically a cap on this. All right, so that's your free money. And notice that under the free money, they've also added the loans. So the, the direct subsidized loan, they also call it direct sub stand for loan. It's kind of an old term. Um, this student is getting 4,500 a year. And the direct unsub, um, unsub loan is also offered to them for an additional 2,000 per year. That's great. So at the end of all of these different um, aid um, opportunities, the cost of attendance is $2,155. That's amazing. That's about 1,100 a semester. So this is a, an amount that maybe could be covered by a work study program um, that could be covered by savings that you had for a little bit. Um, but this would be a year's cost. So notice how dramatically it decreased from direct cost to final cost. However, this does involve you taking out loans, around 6,500 of that. 
And so this is money that you have to pay back. You have to ask yourself, can you pay around 3000 out of pocket in, in direct cost and later be able to pay off 6500 per year for the next two years? Is that affordable? Um, and so that's something that you'll need to discuss with your families, with um, whoever is in your support network to determine what's right for you and what is realistic. All right. But there's something else to consider. This is a great award letter, but but like I said, you have to suss that out. So that's really what an award letter will look like. Other things to consider would include your indirect cause of attending this school, such as transportation to and from, textbooks, supplies, food, clothes. The student is living on campus, so they do have food, room and board, but Sometimes you want to eat something else. So factoring all that into the mix. And so to really understand the true cost of attendance, it's really going to be that out-of-pocket cost plus the amount of loans that you are choosing to borrow. And so out-of-pocket cost plus loans will equal the true cost of attendance. And this true cost of attendance is comparing apples to apples and what you should be using to compare schools to school so that you understand who is giving you a better deal, who is able to offer more without as many loans. Um, and so that's ultimately what how you'll decide. Um, and again, consider those indirect costs such as textbooks, transportation, and food. All right, so that is it for this financial word letter. Uh, feel free to send me an email, but really, most importantly, if you have not completed your FAFSA, complete your FAFSA now. And every year after that, by no later than December 1st, to make sure that you're eligible for state aid as well as federal aid. Thank you so much, and please reach out. We really are here for you.